Good afternoon. Three-fourths of funk is fun. <laughs> Three-eighths of function is fun. Two-thirds of pun is P-U. Loan officers would love trigonometry because they need people to both sign and co-sign loans. <laughs> I guess I went off too much of a tangent with that one. Square roots and cube roots are radical. They're really radical things. It's about getting to the root of the problem. So I do these puns regularly with my students because they come in to my classroom, especially day one, scared, anxious, nervous, worried, fearful. They feel like they have to be there because their degree or certificate says they have to take this class. So I figure it's not only my job to teach, it's my job to inspire. Help them feel better. Help them believe that not only can I do the math, or I wouldn't be doing this, but they can too. Maybe in their own way. Everybody has their own way of going about it. But they, I think we can all do it. Okay. Do we have difficulties? Absolutely. Do we have challenges? Absolutely. But that shouldn't stop us from doing what we can to succeed in math. Okay. So I do these puns to try to loosen up the class a little bit. Have them laughing like you all did. Chuckle, right? And then I work on self-esteem. I like to coach. Because I'm a firm believer that everybody has the capability to do mathematics. But the, the students, a lot of the times, get in their own way of doing it. They stop themselves. While I was never good in the math before, people told me I couldn't do this. And they used that as, a, as an obstacle. So I'm here to change that and let people know that if they give me a chance, and more importantly, if they give themselves a chance, they can be successful. Okay. However, if you're going to be successful, this is going to piggyback a lot on what Lauren was talking about, uh, about success principles. I think there's five essential characteristics that you have to have, which if you apply these characteristics, it will keep the mathematics fun, enjoyable, because you'll have this newfound success. I think the first of these five characteristics is you have to be committed. You have to have a work ethic. You have to want to be uncomfortable. Many of us, many of my students initially are comfortable. I think you have to get uncomfortable. You have to be willing to make mistakes and know that that's okay. Because as I learned in all my career of being a student and as a faculty and as a department chair, you don't learn things by doing everything right. You learn things by messing up and learning the right way to fix it. I had a colleague many, many years ago who came up with the following quote. I forget her name, but some, some years ago. She said, when you're comfortable, you'll do things when it's convenient. When you're committed, you'll do things even if it's not convenient. And I think that applies to math, it applies to everything. But especially to our students in mathematics, I think it applies quite a bit. A second characteristic, I think, to be successful is you have to be coachable, receptive, okay? As one of my colleagues from Cascade many, many years ago told me, Jan Roos, I don't know if any of you know Jan Roos, um, seven years ago, she said, 
We don't teach our students, or rather, we don't grade our students. We grade the work that our students do. So when we give feedback to our students, to you, it's not meant to be anything personal. It's there to make you better. Take you where you're at right now, okay, and what can we do to get better? Okay, and we're here to help you not only grow in mathematics, but to help you think more openly than you do right now. A third characteristic, as mentioned, you've got to be responsible. You need to, as Nick Saban, the football coach at Alabama says, you need to invest your time, don't spend it. Spending time is doing things you already know how to do and just repeating it over and over and over and over again. But that doesn't get you anywhere. You need to invest your time, work on things that you're having difficulty with, and struggle with it. Because if you keep after it long enough, and you reach that point where it finally happens for you, it feels really good. That moment of, oh, I got it. There's no better feeling. At least what I've seen in my students is when they have that, I got that feeling, that light bulb moment. Okay. Like Lauren said, another characteristic, you have to be disciplined. And as Nick Saban said, you can tell I listen to him a lot. He has a lot of success principles. That's why Alabama won all those football championships for, for all those years. He says being disciplined is doing what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, the way it's supposed to get done. It applies to math. In math, we want to teach our students to do things the right way, at the right time, all the time. That's what we do to best with our students is teach them how to do that. And the key to all of this is concentration and focus and avoid repeating past mistakes. Okay? And you might think, oh, Matthew, you make this sound so easy. It's not easy. If it were easy, everybody would do it. But at the same time, it wouldn't be worth it if it were easy. Okay? It has to be, there have to be challenges you have to overcome. Adversity, difficulties. And then the fifth thing is, this is my quote, be persistent and proactive, not resistant and reactive. It's easy to complain and whine. In fact, on my syllabus for every class, any of my students are here will attest to this, not sure, but at the very bottom of my syllabus where I have my rules for my courses, I have a no whining clause. It says no whining. You think, well, that's childish, Matthew. Why would you put a no whining clause? We're adults. Because even us adults, we whine. We whine when things get difficult because it's easy to whine. It's easy to resist. It's easy to react when things get challenging. And I, I tell the students, if you want to whine, this is not the right place to be. I'm not a whiner. I'm all positive. I'm 100% positive. So if you're going to be here, I, I expect the same from you. So if, but if you still feel you need to whine, send me an email. And I had an experience where a student whined on the very first day, and I hadn't taught anything yet. Just started whining. No, no math whatsoever, just started whining from the back of the room. And ever since then, I've always put that no whining clause in there. Okay. The biggest thing about being persistent and proactive is you can write a new story. Perhaps your old story, your past, was challenging. You had people that told you, you can't do math. But that book doesn't have to be open anymore. And get, who gets to make that choice? You do. You do. You have to decide. Is it an easy thing to decide? Probably not, because there's a lot of baggage. Right? But you have to make the choice. Once you make it, it's liberating. You give your, yourselves the opportunity 
to start a new story of success. Right? And these five characteristics that I've talked about, they aren't just for math courses. I think they're for everyday life. If you have a job, if you're going to be successful in a job, any kind of career, you have to be committed, have a good work ethic. You have to be coachable by your supervisor, your manager. You have to be responsible, do what you're supposed to do, be disciplined, do things the right way, and be persistent and proactive and don't complain, don't resist. So it's not just about math, it's about real life. And math, I think, is relevant in real life from the following, from the following standpoint. I had a student when I was first starting at uh, Cascade, she was a criminal justice major. She was taking me for a Math 60 class. It's our introductory, first term introductory algebra course. Probably mid 40s, near 50, African American lady comes up to me at the end of class and says, Matthew, when I finish, I'm gonna work in a woman's shelter. Why do I need all this equations and X's and Y's and all this stuff? Why do I need any of this? Which, you know, I, I put myself in her place. I said, yeah, it's fair, fair question. I said, you're probably right. You probably won't see any X's or Y's or equations or expressions. But you will be taught, number one, how to be attentive to detail. Math teaches that. That's important for everything. Number two, problem solving abilities which you have to be a problem solver. I don't care what career you take, criminal justice, anything. And three, it teaches you how to think. A lot of us, we probably start off thinking very narrow-minded, and what math tends to do is expand that. And it's uncomfortable, but that's what it does for you. And then as a, a final thought, we have our graduation day into the second week of June typically, right? But I want to suggest the following. Every day we graduate, not just on graduation day. Why? Because every day we transition from one phase of life to another, not just on the day we walk up on stage and get the piece of paper, but every day. But how that transition goes is up to you. Thank you.